Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map for suppressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Monswinkel. Thank you, Google Translate. But before that, this video is brought to you by all of our channel members. Thank you, Farm Hands, Farm Barons, and Farm Kings. Now, the Monswinkel map we found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for PC players only. Now, the reason that this map is available for PC players is because that this map is a 4X map. And as a result of it being a 4X map, well, we have not yet seen a 4X map make its way to console players in FS22 or FS19 or 17, for that fact. Hopefully, with the next version of Farm Sim, whenever that comes out, we'll see it support 4X maps with respect to console, assuming that they drop the old platforms. But for now, it's going to be a 4X map. Let me read you some of the description. This map is a recreation of the village in Brandenburg, Germany. This map offers 67 fields, 23 forests, 61 meadows, a natural river where you can get water for free, no collectibles, and 35 cell or production points. Now, this map does have some required mods. So in addition to the mods that we typically use when we take a look at maps, we're also going to be making use of chain link fence with gate, concrete fence with gate, fence wall and gate, as well as stone walls. So those are the required mods. And the mods we typically use when we take a look at maps, well, they are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and now straw harvest. Now, we'll tell you if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the farm is built out exactly how you're going to see it here in new farmer mode. There is one little bit of an exception. You do not own any land, and you also do start out with starting machinery. Now, also, I'm going to tell you that I did not have an opportunity to test this map on a low end system because I am currently traveling for PAX East. And as such, I do not have access to that low end system that I typically use to test maps with. But to that end, I do believe that given the large number of trees that we have on this particular map, that low end systems may suffer performance wise with respect to this map. So your results may vary, but just be cautious. If you are using a lower end system, you may find it stuttering a little bit when you're around a whole lot of trees. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Remember, this is a 4X map, so all of these fields are going to be much, much larger than they appear here on the PDA. This map does have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22. And in addition, if you are playing with the premium expansion activated, well, you then will find that you do have access to your red beets, carrots, and parsnips. We take a look at our lands overview. You'll see we start by owning farmland ID 18. This is going to be the main starting farm. You can buy this for $31,640 in any alternate game mode. In addition, you do start up by owning farmland ID 17, which is a field that has an area of 5.62 hectares in size or 15.65 acres and can be bought for $316,000. Now, as far as other viable farmlands of note, farmland ID 8, as well as farmland ID 88, are both buildable lots. Farmland ID 8 can be bought for $93,000. And farmland 88 can be bought for $152,000. In addition, we do have a biogas plant that is available on this map, and it can be found at farmland ID 154, and can be bought for $140 thousand dollars let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen the farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the viable farmlands how large those farmlands are if those farmlands include any field or fields what is included then lastly how much is that farmland going to cost us now we can see that we start out with the fields and farmlands lining up one for one but then they just completely go haywire and here, as we get down further in the list, they are not lining up whatsoever. But at any rate, you can see that we have lots of farmlands available. 
some of these farmlands are fairly expensive. For example, farmland ID 86, $1.2 million. Farmland ID 89, $1.5 million. I would suspect those are fairly large forested areas. Now let's go ahead and cross-reference this with our field calculator screen. And this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And we can see in this list that we have fields ranging anywhere from one hectare all the way up to 30 hectares in size. So quite a variety of field sizes. Now this map is making use of the generic soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that generic soil map is being applied to these fields. As one would expect with the generic soil map, we've got a lot of fields down to the south with silty clay and loam mix. To the north, also, we've got a lot of loam and silty clay. And toward the middle of the map, we've got a mix of all the soil types, loamy sand, sandy loam, loam, and silty clay. Now, our starting field is going to be a mix of loam and sandy loam. Let's go ahead and take a look at our crop counter. We do have what appears to be the base game crop counter available to us here on this particular map. And with respect to the prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are again, once again, available to us in FS22. With respect to animal outputs, eggs, wool, and milk, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of those as well, as well as our hay, silage, straw, and grass. Down to the base game production items, we once again continue the trend with the ability to sell all of the base game production items. In fact, we're going to see that trend continue with respect to both the platinum and premium production items as well. Now we do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do have the ability to sell lime. We do also have the ability of selling our stones. And again, like I said earlier, with respect to the platinum expansion, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the platinum expansion production items. In addition, we have the ability to sell all of the premium expansion production items and crops. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure. And also, if you are playing with the straw harvest pack, you do have the ability of getting rid of your hay and straw pellets. We start out with a modest list of starting equipment. All of it is owned. None of it is leased. We do not have any animals pre-placed on this map at all. We do have contracts available. We do not own any production chains at the start. And this map does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractor. We have for our harvester the Nova 330 and the Nova 330 Power Stream 500 header. For the header, we have a Topliner 4090H header trailer. We have our 1986 pickup truck, as well as a pair of Welker DK 115 trailers. The Cento 4000 Super Cultivator as well as the KG3001 Super Amazon Power Hero. And that is typically paired up with the Sintia 3000 Super Cedar. For our tractor, we have the Q7M front loader arms. And for that front loader arms, we have the Universal Bucket. Now this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements included. Now, as far as our map tour goes, well, our farm tour, don't blink because you're gonna miss it. We have a three bay garage, we have our farmhouse, and that's it. And that's all we have as far as our farm. We do have a sleep trigger here at the front door. And as we would expect with the Halt by the Room farmhouse, we do have our wardrobe trigger here in the garage. Now this map has 30 pre-placed productions. The description said 36 productions and sell points, but there are 30 productions pre-placed on this map. We have a spinnery, we have a bakery, we have two sawmills, two carpentries, two dairies, we have a sugar mill, a cereal mill, an oil mill, we have a tailor, we have a great processing, we have four large greenhouses, we have a BGA, we have an iron furnace. We also have a flooring factory, a furniture factory. We have a barrel factory as well as a paper factory. We have a pet accessories as well as art accessories production. We have shingle production. 
We have a wood shop. We have a soup factory, as well as preserved foods and a potato processor. So we have base game productions, we have platinum productions, and we have premium production. So here you can see we've got a fair bit of forestry here on the western and northern sections of the map. And that is where I think you're going to run into issues with lower end systems. So as we move up the western edge of the map, we do have some productions placed over here. In fact, we have our dairy, we have our one of our carpentries, and we have our oil mill. Just north of that, we're going to find a grain cellar. And then you're going to find just north of that, and you can kind of make it out right now. That is where our iron ore is going to spawn. To the right of that, we have our building site, Farmland ID 8. And then we have a grain cell point directly beside that. Now, overall, the farmland on this map is fairly flat. If the map is not completely flat, to say the least. We're going to kind of follow this little river. Make its way down. I guess it's a little more of a little stream. Make its way down to the main river on the map. We are kind of looping close to where we started out. And then down below, we have our flooring factory. We have our biomass heating plant. And then we have our animal dealer. We've got a couple other items kind of to the north here. One of which is, of course, farmland ID 88 on another building site. And then beside that, we do have a fuel buy point as well as Mama Joe's Diner as far as a sell point. We make our way over to the eastern side of the map. The way this map is laid out, it's going to feel a lot bigger than it is. It's already a 4X map, but it's going to feel bigger than that because of how we have the road set up. There is a rim road that is basically running an entire loop around the map, and then we have a couple roads that are cutting kind of sideways through the middle and there's going to be production points and cell points across all of those very maps so there's there are various roads so there's a whole lot of traversing around the map with respect to these cell points down below we have another one of our carpentry shops our vehicle dealer is over here again on the eastern side of the map right here by this football field or soccer field depending on your orientation we have a grain cell point below here well as there and then this is going to be our art supplies factory we have our paper factory there as well And I believe this is going to be our, um, let's get a little closer. This is going to be our shingle company. So our shingle production. Here we have one of our sawmills. And we have two sawmills on this map.
we have another building site. I completely overlooked this building site when I was doing my free run through the map. Let's see where that is going to be located. That is going to be build site farmland ID 43, and it's going to be viable for $70,000. So we have one small pre-placed farm and three viable farmlands that you can buy and then put buildings down at. So overall, I think this map is going to be a pretty good map with respect to multiplayer. So here we have our root crop preserves factory. Our cereal mill is coming up. South of the road, we have another grain cell point. To the north of the road, we have our steel mill. This is where we're gonna make our steel rolls. Then we have our sugar factory. We have our barrel factory. This is going to be our furniture factory. Then our soup factory is coming up. It's kind of tucked away here in the woods. Zoop, zoop, zoop. That's going to be located right there. And then the last two things that we're going to take a look at is we have our potato chip factory which is going to be south of the road and then i believe to the north of the road we have a root crop cell point that on the pda is marked as beet factory but it is not actually a production factory it is just a cell point so there we have our potato chip factory this is our root crop cell point and with that, I'm going to make my way back over to the vehicle shop. We're going to grab our Mahindra and do our drive around. At our vehicle shop, we have our shop trigger here out front. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra then. We'll both see where the Mahindra spawns at. And we're going to have then something to drive around with when we get to that portion of the video. So here we have the spawn point for our vehicles. Fairly large spawn point for our vehicles to spawn in at. That is always good to see. And then down here at the service area, we have our dealer trigger. Now what we do not see is where the actual trigger is located. And if we pull up our triggers, well, it's going to be right here, kind of right in front of that wrench. But it would be nice to really see those markers on the ground. Now let's head out with uh, with our Mahindra and do a bit of our drive. Let's just go ahead right across the street. And this is where we're going to find one of our sawmills. So we have our pallet spawn point, our interactive area. We have our wood dump point, we have our wood cell trigger, and we have our wood chip spawn point. And I think we'll just make our way kind of clockwise around the map. soccer field, football field, depending on your persuasion. This is going to be a grocery cell point, I believe. Yep, so we have our grocery cell point and we have a restaurant cell point here and 
also have our bakery. So the interactive icon, we're gonna find our dump point and how it's spawn point around back. We have another grain cell point. Lots of cell points on this map. Lots of places to sell things. It's gonna be good for price competitivity, right? You shouldn't be able to easily find a good price pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Got another grain cell point going on right there. And then across the river we go. Really like these tree-lined roads. A nice aesthetic when we have the shadows of the trees coming across the roads. Then here we've got three things going on. This, I believe, was our shingle factory. We have interactive icon, we have our pallet spawn point, and our dump point on the side. We've got our art accessories factory. We have our dump point, we have our inter or, sorry, our spawn point for our pallets. And our interactive point here at the side door. And then we have our paper factory. So we have our dump point for our logs. We have our wood cell trigger inside there, as well as our interactive icon. And then our pallet spawn point, or our paper spawn point, is going to be located outside here, right there. Now, toward the end of the video, I think what we're going to do is kind of do another production run through because of the fact that, well, it's been over a year since I've looked at the platinum productions, and therefore I suspect it's probably been quite a long time since maybe some of you others folks have taken a look at those platinum productions, and therefore it might be a good time to do a little bit of a refresher. Here we have our second sawmill. So we have our wood dump point, we have our wood cell trigger, we have our interactive icon, and we have our pallet spawn point there. In fact, we have multiple pallet spawn points under, under that shed there as well. Here we have that third building site, kind of here to the south. So I do think this would be a pretty good map with respect to multiplayer. Now one thing that I would like to see with respect to that would have been to have four farm areas built out. And right now we have one little area that really just has a farmhouse and a three bay garage. And then we have three open areas building. But overall, with the layout, with the productions, the amount of cell points, I think this would be a really good multiplayer map. So we went past this cell point, which is listed as the ranch. And we have agricultural trader and a gas station coming up here on our left. The 
there we have our dump point and our fuel point. Oh, we need to hang it right here, and we've got a couple hot spots up by fields 25, 28. Just like I was mentioning with respect to having some quirks with our recording setup, we are using just keyboard and mouse with respect to driving around and looking around so we don't have quite the nice smooth pans that we would on our normal recording setup with a joystick. But here we have our stone crusher. Then we have our grape processing facility. Basic game setup. So we have our PowerPoint in front. We have our interactive icon and our dump point. And then up here we have our four greenhouses. These are just standard base game of greenhouses. We have a hayloft as well over here. And our greenhouses are going to be located at farmland ID 171. And that's going to be viable for $156,000. So pretty expensive for the greenhouses, but we do get a fair bit of land here as well. Now we just need to double back a little bit, so bear with me. And while we double back, let's talk about our scoring a little bit. We are going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. Because with 30 productions built in, it definitely deserves a full point there. We've got productions from the base game, and both expansion DLCs in Platinum and Premium. With respect to the ability to sell all of our basing crops, animal outputs, and production points, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well. Because again, we do indeed have the ability to sell all the basing crops. A little bonus point. No, we don't really give bonus points. But if we did, we'd give a bonus points for the ability to sell all the Platinum expansion and the Premium expansion production items as well. So here we have our biogas plant. And at the biogas plant, we can sell the BGA. But what we can't sell are the supporting buildings around it. So you do need to buy the land in order to have access to the BGA. That's why we don't see the triggers pop up. But if we want to sell it after we've owned it, we can sell it. And this is what sells. What does not sell is going to be the accessory buildings around it as well as the six silage bunker. And there's six, there's several. We have three pull-through silage bunkers located right there. And then right around the corner, we have another three. So yes, we have six in total. With respect to the farms being customizable or the main starting farm being customizable, we're gonna be giving the map a full point because both buildings and the fence that surrounds that farm area is completely sellable. So that is a good thing to see. Oh my. DHL delivery van, you've got in my way. So here we have our spinnery. Standard base game spinnery. And let's double back and make our way now to the south and complete that leg of our journey.
I'd love to know what you all think of this map down in the comments below. If you do have a lower end system, I would like to hear from you how it's handling on your system. Like I said, I can't do the testing that I would normally do if I was at the house because I did not pack that machine up and bring it with me. Here we have our dairy, one of our dairies. There are two on this map. Have a dump point, a power point around the back. And this particular factory. What is it? It is going to be the wood turning factory. Like I said, the way this map is laid out, it's going to feel a lot bigger because of how the roads are set up and the cell points and such. At some point in time, you're probably going to get on all of these roads. To our right, we have our barrel factory. To our interactive point, we have our dump point and our barrel spawn point around the back. This is going to be our furniture factory. So we have an interactive point at the door. We have our dump point here at the double doors, and then our pallet spawn point once again around the back. Coming up on the right is going to be our soup factory. Zoop, zoop, zoop from the Lanka, the premium expansion. And our soups are going to spawn directly in front of us. Then we have our interactive icon and dump point here on the side. Coming up on our left, we have the potato chip factory. And that is also going to be a part of the premium expansion. Now with these fields being fairly flat, you shouldn't run into too many issues in undersizing your machinery and specifically your powered machinery. So if an implement is requesting 300 horsepower, but you only have 250 horsepower, then you're probably gonna be fine using it on these flatter fields. If you had fields with hills, then you would probably wanna upsell that a little bit or up your machinery a little bit. Let's say have a 350 horsepower cracker to support a 250 horsepower implement. So we're at dump point there. We have our interactive icon there at the door and then our potato chip spawn point right there as well. On the other side of the road, we have a root crop cell point. On the PDA, it's listed as beet factory, but it's not an actual factory. It doesn't produce any outputs. It's just gonna be a plain Jane stock cell point. And we're going to continue to run this road, and it's going to loop us around along the western edge of the map. That's what's going to allow us to get up here to our next few points of interest. 
I believe this is where our second dairy is going to be located. Our second carpentry shop is also going to be located up there. And I believe our oil mill is up there as well. We'll find out here in just a few minutes. Now, with respect to our scoring metric of buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique as well as ground textures, I didn't look through build mode in the video, but let me tell you, I looked at it before I recorded the video. There isn't anything special related to the map in build mode. It's all base game stuff as well as DLCs and other items. So we're going to give the map a full point because it is basically using base game buildings, platinum buildings, and premium buildings. All of those are indeed using the new texturing technique. There's no real custom ground textures, fairly standard ground textures, and fairly standard plant textures as well. And we're just about there, guys. Right here on the left, we're gonna have three productions. As I mentioned, we have our carpentry, we have our oil mill, and we have our second dairy. So we have our dairy dump point, we have our dairy pallet spawn point, and then our interactive icon. For our oil mill, we have our dump point and pallet spawn point. And then our interactive point around the back. And then we have our carpentry with our pallet and wood cell point and our interactive point right there. Continuing up the road, we're gonna have a grain cell point over here on our right. That's right across field five then just north of that is where we're going to have the iron ore spawn which we'll have to use for the steel mill we've got our grain cell point then our steel mill is just the street Don't mind me, we're just losing a little bit of traction. You see we already have some spawned in there. Here we have build zone eight, and then another grain cell point. Then a little bit of a drive now across the top of the map in order to get to the next pair of points of interest. And that's gonna be right over here past these two forestry areas second forestry area kind of comes down to a point that's also where we have build site 88 that we can purchase now I would suggest if you're interested in our PAX coverage Keep a lookout over the next couple of days if you're watching this within a fairly short order of it going live we will be hopefully providing some tax coverage the big wild card is i just do not know if we're going to be able to have time to put that coverage together while we are here in boston or if it's going to have to wait until we get back home so for monday of next week is going to be a travel day just driving home and then Tuesday I go back to work 
So if we don't get the videos published before Monday, then I wouldn't expect to see them until maybe Wednesday, uh, depending on what Giants does with respect to releases. So here we have a fuel point, Mama Joe's Diner cell point. Now we've already been to those areas to the east. We're gonna dive down this road now. This road would eventually take us over to the starting farm. So we have our Taylor, base game Taylor there. We have our animal dealer coming up. Now this animal dealer does not have a bale sell point. It is simply an animal dealer buy point or a delivery point for your actual animals. And then we have a couple more points of interest. We have our biomass heating plant coming up here on our right. That's where we're going to bring logs and wood chips. So we have our dump point and our wood cell trigger there. We have another platinum expansion production building located right here. And this is going to be the flooring factory. So we have our interactive icon our dump point in our pallet spawn point over on this side then our last point of interest is going to be a restaurant grain cell point so with respect to the last scoring metric of player interactive areas being clearly marked we are going to have to take a quarter point off with respect to the dealer not having the actual dealer trigger marked with indicator icons on the ground and therefore we are going to be giving them this map a score of 4.75 out of 5. Very very respectable score. Again this is a 4x map. It is available for PC players only and can be found over at the Giants Mod Hub. Now I would love to know what your all's thoughts are down in the comments below with respect to this particular map. Is it one that you're looking to add to single player? Or maybe you're looking to find some folks in order to add this to a multiplayer server and have fun in multiplayer. Let me know again down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming.